Welcome back. All right, so I want to talk about officiating. Yep, I want to talk about officiating because I know this is a topic that comes up a lot in the comment section, so I figure we're halfway through the season. Why don't we have a discussion? Um, I have advocated for a long time for the idea of there being an eye in the sky. I have also said that referees need to get the calls right, and if that means replay, then you do replay. This game's played very fast. If you haven't witnessed a hockey game at full speed at ice level, it is something different. I mean... You know, not like in, in... The funny thing is, if you're in the nosebleeds, you might have a better view of some of the calls than the referee on the ice. Uh, the game's very fast, and I'm I'm amazed at how quickly they catch this. Uh, linesman, when it comes to calling what is or isn't offside, pff, I mean, really. Uh, there was a game the other night, too, where, you know, a linesman blows a dead, and they're like, oh, but that might not have been offside, so why'd they blow it dead there? And it's like... We know there would have been a goal, and then it would have been called back for offside because we've said it. So, but it, it it is one of those things where the officials are always being scrutinized, and and I hear it from announcers too. Uh, there are some broadcasts that I watch, and I think they're just it's constant. Almost every penalty against the team that they're actively cheering for, um, they will argue, well, that shouldn't be a penalty because well that that was that's nothing. I mean, yeah, he hooks him and brings him down and. Sure, he kicked him while he was down, but it's kind of his fault for being there. So, we're going to look through the penalties. There's a lot. Um, I wanted to get into the, the penalties here and how they're being called. I'll start with high sticking because I wanted to get the common ones at the top, but then it just more and more came up. I, I don't even think I get everything up here. But high sticking is one of those interesting ones. So, they can review a four-minute four, four minute penalty and take the penalty off altogether. Why can't they do that with two? So I will agree that they should be able to review high sticking calls. And I'm, I'm not talking about like spending 5-10 minutes going over it and going over it. I mean just taking a quick look. We see pauses all the time during games. I want to see them get the calls right. High sticking, it's easy. Was it the opponent that did it or was it friendly fire? If there's any doubt, you do a review. And if it's two minutes, you should still be able to review it. It's frustrating when the video footage is there. So we as fans know... Oh, well, wait a minute. That was the other team uh, th that, you know, uh, they, they stick their own player and now, you know, or it's the wrong guy as another one, right? Where a guy goes to the box and you're like, that's not the guy that committed the penalty. It's not him at all. And again, for referees, they have to call this very quickly. Uh, they may have their arm up for a delayed call. They have to keep in mind that the player that they're, they're calling the penalty on has already left the ice. And, and there's a lot going on. And then they have to continue to monitor the ice because there can be another infraction during the delayed penalty. We have seen that many times. It's it's not easy to call it. And I, I think that it wouldn't, wouldn't take that much. There's times too where the referee's view of what's going on may be obstructed a little bit. And just letting him be able to review the play would just be... I, I think it makes sense. Holding is tough. Holding is... Because, again, what justifies or just doesn't justify being a penalty. Because uh, I've heard before, well, it's a little bit of a tug, but it's not really a hold. Okay, so is it like a one Mississippi, two Mississippi? Th like, how many Mississippis for it? Like, it's, it's weird, right? It's holding or it's not holding. I watch the NFL. Holding penalties, uh, they make people angry. But there's a lot of holding penalties in the NFL as well. Um, but I, I, I can't remember hearing during an NFL broadcast, well, that was more of a tug than a hold. It's just, you grab the jersey, that's it. That's, you grab the jersey. Hooking. Hooking's a tough one. Um, this also gets into holding the stick. So my favorite is when player A hooks player B, and then player B goes, well, I'm going to make sure I get a call of this, and puts their arm down to hold the stick right here so that the ref, they can go, hey, the ref, look, he's hooking me. And the ref can go, yeah, and you're holding his stick, so you're both going. It's an odd one. It's sort of like the embellishment and tripping. Should you be able to call a tripping penalty and then call embellishment at the same time? And I know there's people who will say yes. My impression of it is simple. I, I don't think you should be able to. If a guy goes, if a guy gets tripped and if he decides to flail around for style points, that's on him. That's that's fine. He might get he might get a 10 from the German judge. He might get a 5 from the American judge. You can never tell with diving, it's tough. But I, I I just I have a hard time with if you're tripped. So you're knocked off your skates, you're falling to the ice. If you fall with style, 
Should that mean you have to go to the box? I, and, and I do agree that when it's not a trip and you fall with style, that's embellishment. But yeah, that's that's where I, I will agree with people. Now, part of the reason referees will do this is what time in the game is it? It's the third period. It's a tie game, four minutes left. Um, not really sure on that one, so I'm going to call both. If they were allowed to go to an eye in the sky or if they were allowed to review it, Maybe we wouldn't see so many offsetting penalties. Maybe we wouldn't see so many embellishments. Maybe we'd see more. Now, I'm not advocating for six or seven times per period referees stopping the play to go review something to decide whether or not to call a penalty. But I think we can all agree it'd be nice to see the, the right play called, uh, the right penalties called. Uh, Cross-checking has started to become a bit frustrating for me because it depends on the ref. Now, this is something I've talked about before, too. Referees will have different standards, and that has always been the case, where you will say, okay, that's the referee, this is the standard for now. Now, referees are not as well known as they were, say, 30 years ago. Uh, they all wear helmets, they don't have their names on their backs, uh, it's two referee system now rather than one. Uh, back in the 80s, there were referees that were loathed, absolutely loathed in the National Hockey League. Uh, by certain fan bases, and I know there still are. It's not the same. It is. It is not the same. Kerry Fraser. See, there's fan bases that will hear that. Andy Van Helmond. Um, yeah, yeah. It it just it goes on and on, and and we don't have referees that have that kind of infamy with or attached to their name, whether that's the right word or not. But cross checking, I've noticed coming back to cross checking, is not being called universally. Um, and I've started to hear now, well, yeah, he takes that cross check in front of the net. He gets up and slashes the guy. He has to expect to take that cross check in front of the net. So that's something they took out of the game last year. And now this year it's inconsistent in how it's being called. That's where we as fans get frustrated, right? Where they'll say, all right, here's the standard. And then six months to a year later, well, we relaxed the standard. We decided, eh. So if, if cross-checking is not a big deal, then fine. But if, if it was a big deal last year, why do we start? Why are we starting to see it creeping back in now, right? Roughing is a tough one too. Uh, roughing's now being called for when you pull off the guy's helmet. Some guys' helmets come off way easier than others. Uh, that's been a discussion point too. Of course, if you don't leave the ice after your helmet's knocked off, that's a penalty. Uh, initially, the idea was that if you're right next to the puck, if you're involved in the play, you can you can play without your helmet. I haven't seen it called that way at all. I haven't seen it called that way at all. So you got to leave the ice, and that leaves your team shorthanded, unexpectedly shorthanded, which is completely different than actually being shorthanded because you probably don't have your penalty killers on the ice. And even if you did, they're not expected to be killing a penalty in that moment. Uh, roughing, though, is tough because, uh, again, you'll see like a scrum, and there's guys throwing punches, glove punches. But glove punches are supposed to be roughing, right? The problem, too, is that when you look at the penalty, there's various sources I use to put all this together, and it'll even say, depending on the force of the punch. So you can punch them, just not really hard. And, and again, one referee may have a different standard than another, and so that throws everything kind of into uncertainty. So I've talked a little bit about tripping. Tripping is really basic. Tripping's tough too, though. There's times where a guy's already falling down and a player will go to get the puck off of him. Might tap his skates, but the guy's already going down, gets the tripping penalty. And again, do you decide, well, that's still tripping because he's not actually down yet? Or do you say, well, he's already falling over. So the stick didn't have an impact on whether or not he, he was tripped or not, right? So again, I, I don't see that as being one that we would want reviewed, right? High sticking, yes, we can agree that should be reviewed. Uh, a lot of the others, no. Uh, slashing, you could you could look at slashing, uh, definitely. Especially, and this might be a situation too where you could make it so that if a referee sees there's an injury, so I'm I'm looking at that end of the ice. There's two guys sort of you know doing whatever behind me here. They're kind of holding each other down. You know when guys are just having a wrestle during a game. And then one, one of them's hurt. And you're like, okay, what happened there? You should be able to go and review it and go, okay, so during that little skirmish you guys had, which I've never understood why that doesn't at least lead to a whistle anyways, but it's fine. Uh, we've seen as many as, what, nine guys all just kind of muddled together in a scrum and then 
the one guy's leftovers just kind of skating around with the puck because referees are like, I'm not blowing the whistle. Um, but yeah, uh, slashing the, those, those incidents that can go on there. If you see that a player's hurt, you should be able to review it. I, I will say it. I think referees should be able to look and go, that guy got hurt on the play. I didn't see it and acknowledge. I didn't see it. We've seen referees. There was one game I saw last night where the referee goes over and I didn't see it. And you can clearly tell that he's telling the players and the coach, I didn't see what happened. And that's okay. It's okay for referees not to see it. And I know people say, well, if there's two referees, they should see everything. But they don't. Uh, they, they're going to focus on the puck. There's times, too, where the linesman will make the call. I will say I think the NHL would be wise to allow uh, linesmen to make calls. Um, that if, if you see something, and I mean, it's not like they don't huddle and discuss and ask linesmen, what did you see? And then the linesman can answer. That should just be the case. Where a linesman should be able to say, yeah, there was a slash in the corner there, so he's in the box for the next two. I, I don't think that hurts the game. Uh, would you see penalties go up? Yes. Briefly, yes, but you'd also end up seeing a cleaner game out of it. Um, boarding, it's inconsistently called. There are times where there are boarding incidents that make me wince, kind of look away from the screen. And then there's times where they'll call a board and I'm like, that's a boarding call? But the one I saw earlier was worse. Again... I don't think replay would hurt there. Um, there's not a lot of boards during a game either, right? So I, I don't think it would hurt. Spearing, we don't see that co get called very often. Thankfully, it's not as prominent in the game as it used to be. Spearing used to be, well, yeah, I mean, you have a stick for a reason. It can be a weapon. And spearing was far worse. Check to the head should, I think, be a five minute. I, I think if it's a check to the head and it's bad enough that you're going to say that's a penalty, it should be a five minute penalty. If fighting's five minutes then a check to the head should be five minutes because you can cause a concussion. You can knock a guy out of the game. Guy might feel fine during the game, and then after the game, he's not fine because of that check to the head. I don't think a five-minute penalty for a check to the head would be awful. The NHL said they can't get all the, the, the head contact out of the game, and you can't. It's a high-speed game. These guys are skating at, what, 25 kilometers an hour? You're not going to be able to stop them from having an impact with somebody's head when they collide at that speed. Two guys are going 20k and they collide, right? That's a lot of it's a lot of force. It's a lot of energy that's being transferred between the two, and the odds of a head injury they definitely go up. Even if you don't hit their head, they can still end up concussed. Uh, fighting, it's going to be five minutes. It's not going anywhere. I've always thought it was funny when uh, they call two minutes for roughing on guys who are actually fighting. Where I wonder, so they didn't throw enough punches for that to be a fight, or are you saying it wasn't? wasn't impressive enough to actually be a fight, which of course then leads to it being a four on four rather than being five on five when there's a fight. Uh, there's the 10 minute misconducts, which are called very haphazardly and the unsportsmanlike conducts, which are again, you know, there's times where it's called and I'm like, wow, because when there's as many live mics at a game as there is, you hear as much swearing as you do. You realize how much verbal abuse the officials take from coaches and from players. And so when a referee says, that's it, you're in the box, I, I find that odd because I may have been watching another game that same night where a referee took way worse verbally from the team, from the coaches, and just let it go. Just say, no, I'd forget it. So th this isn't called as consistently as it should be. And 10-minute misconducts, um, I think a lot of the time it's a referee's tired of dealing with a certain problematic player, and they're like, I just go, 10 minutes, you're out. And then, of course, it doesn't change the manpower, although it does hurt that team for those 10 minutes, especially if it's a defenseman. Uh, game misconduct it really is a, a, a similar to the 10-minute misconduct. It's called, it, it's not always called as consistently as I think it should be. There have been times where a guy will get five and doesn't get the game, and I'm thinking, why didn't he get the game there? That hit was that brutal. You're going to give him five. Why not give him the game misconduct? Uh, instigating is a penalty I would, I would ditch. There are there there are so few instigators, and it it's called at times that I don't think it necessarily should have been, and then there's times it's called and it's like I I don't know was that an it's maybe, but again I I I would pitch instigator delay of game, uh, there are a lot of delay of game penalties, uh, and and it's just it's it's part of it, um, they should be able to review that too though, there are times where it kisses the glass and they call it delay of game. And there are times where the puck goes out. And again, I've seen referees over the last week go over to a coach and say, I didn't see it. Coach is like, that puck went straight out, went straight out. 
And the referees just, I didn't see it. So again, they're human. They don't see it. They don't see it. Um, you should be able to review that. And again, it wouldn't take very long. It, it really wouldn't. It wouldn't take that long. Uh, elbowing doesn't get called nearly as much because guys don't really do the elbowing quite as much as they used to. Uh, it, is, it is not uh, as dangerous of a game when it comes to getting elbowed because, man, that would that would suck. But, uh, yeah, the elbowing is not as bad as it was. Kneeing has been on the rise lately. But is it? Like, there's a lot of discussion, too, about goaltenders and delay a game for the net getting knocked off and them looking at that. Apparently, Matt Murray's being singled out again. But kneeing isn't... I don't think it's epidemic. It, it feels like there's weeks where it's bad. Again, the guy, if it's a knee-on-knee knee situation, you're risking your own knee by throwing it too. I mean, yes, you've got it locked. You're more secure in all likelihood than the other guy. But we've seen a guy who's guilty of a knee-on-knee knee hurt himself too. So um, I, I, kneeing is just this. It, it's something that gets done a lot of the time, usually by defensemen it seems, where they lose their positioning. And in the last moment, last ditch effort to try to prevent the guy getting past him, they stick the leg out, and then it's a knee on knee. Uh, it's dangerous. Um, it's not always premeditated. It can look very premeditated, but I, I think a lot of the time uh, it is just, I, I don't want to get beaten, so you throw the leg out. Uh, it was something I noticed with Edler the last year in Vancouver, that he was, as he was slowing down a bit, um, taking penalties for that kind of thing, because he was getting caught out of position a little more often. Uh, I mentioned holding the stick. Holding the stick is one of those ones with embellishment that, I, I don't know. Um, I don't think you can review those either. Because, uh, again, I don't want to see the whole game get ground to a halt. Interference, well, it depends, doesn't it? Uh, it depends on the time of the game. Interference slides as you get into the third period. One complaint that I've always had with hockey is, that what's a penalty in the first is not necessarily a penalty in the third. And again, for new fans to the game, that has to be frustrating. Um, where it's, well, wasn't that interference? Well, in the first it is, but we're in the third period. It's not interference anymore. Or, well, yeah, it was interference earlier, but this is a tie game. They don't want to have an impact on the game. If you're not calling penalties, you are impacting the game. This is why when I hear, well, I, this is great. The referees are trying to make sure they don't have an impact. By not calling the penalties you are having an impact. You're letting players um, take liberties. You're letting players bend the rules a little bit and obstruct and hold and hook and do these things. Uh, and you're, you're basically giving them carte blanche on some level, which is impacting the game. So when referees are trying not to, they still are. It's a thankless job. It really is. Um, and here I am, the, the, the hockey guy with his referee jersey on, just, you know, anyways. Uh, penalty shots aren't called very consistently either. Like, again, so if we go back a couple years ago, a lot of them were being called, and now it's not nearly as much. Now, I, I agree with the standard now more than I agreed with it then. And I remember a time when, unless a guy was in clear and didn't get the shot off because he got tripped or he got knocked over, something happened so he could not get the shot off, it was not a penalty shot. So if somebody's halfway in, like halfway clear of the defender and the defender knocks him down, but he gets a shot on net, you got the shot on net, it's not a penalty shot. Now they will call that as a penalty shot. Uh, but it, it's not as interesting as it was a couple years ago, where it's like, really, that's a penalty shot? And it would be a situation where maybe the defenseman's almost even with the player and kind of hooks and holds a little bit. Player gets a shot off, but it's not that strong. And they go, that's it, penalty shot. So I, I don't feel like those are being called quite as much. Checking from behind, we don't see very often because that's it's boarding, right? It's boarding, it's cross-checking. Um, the, the checking from behind portion of it, we really don't see that get called hardly at all. Uh, butt ending doesn't either, thankfully. There aren't a lot of guys taking their stick. And just like the spear, we don't see the butt ending getting done very much either. Um, goalie interference, I saved the best for last, right? Goalie interference is... I think pretty consistently called. I did the video on it not too long ago. I don't feel like there's anything to add to that right now. I feel like offsides called pretty consistently too. So if you're coming in across the blue line and the puck's ahead of you, you're obviously not offside. Now, if there's a teammate of yours that's in ahead of the, the blue line, um, they're offside until they tag up. So as long as they tag up before you touch the puck again, that play is onside. 
And I think that's where people don't like how offside's being called now. If you come into the zone before the puck and the puck's not on your stick, you're offside. Um, and, and I know there's people who don't necessarily like that either because if you have control, you can proceed the puck into the zone, but there's there's too much gray area. I think if you proceed the puck into the zone, you're automatically offside. I think that's just, that's it. Now, whether or not the tag up would go away, um, we've seen the NHL go with delayed offsides and just offsides. Uh, they, they switched back to the delayed offside because offsides was a disaster where no matter what, it would just it's offside. That's it. We're just calling it. And you had so many more whistles. Um, I could see them tweaking it a little bit so that you can't tag up. So if I bring the puck into the zone and my teammate's in there, it doesn't matter when I touch the puck, that would be called as offside. Um, two, four, or five, the penalty minute uh, numbers. Uh, of course, you can review a major. You can review a four-minute. I think you should be able to review certain certain two-minute penalties. You guys can let me know in the comment section below if you think certain penalties should be reviewed or, or all of them. Uh, should there be one referee on the ice and one eye in the sky that's got, you know, uh, uh, basically there's an earpiece for the referee on the ice and the referee up top says there was a hook, there was a slash, there was, you know, whatever. Now, that scenario could be a nightmare. Absolutely could be a nightmare. Could be tough for for when you're the official on the ice and a coach is yelling at you just saying, yeah, it was Bill up there. Go yell at Bill. He's uh, row 14 there, section 205. Oh, he's running. There he, there he goes. You coward, Bill. Uh, but I, I, I don't know how you, I don't know how you would make that work and, and not end up because you're, you have to have the accountability too, right? Uh, first period versus third period penalties. I think if it's a penalty in the first, it should be a penalty in the third. And I think players adapt. We saw that with the cross checking last year. They adapted. Now, we're starting to see certain games where the cross-checking is coming back in. If they don't nip that in the bud, it's it's just going to keep getting worse. Uh, the average power play percentage has come up. And I think this is part of the reason why uh, there's a lot more talk about penalties now. The power plays are running at a 22.37% uh, rate of, of, of working out for the team, uh, which is higher than last year was 20.61%. Trying to find an era where power plays were this lethal, you have to go back to the early 80s. 82 83, it was 22.94%. And the three seasons that preceded that, it was higher than 22.37% too. But I think when the power plays are more and more effective, that is going to lead to more scrutiny about what's called, what isn't, and what the referees are doing. And of course, the even up calls are still there. We still see it. How many games have we seen? Well, this team's had three power plays in a row. They better behave themselves because they're going to end up shorthanded the next time out. I think that's a problem. I, I definitely think there are times where one team might take eight penalties and the other team takes two. And I think that's okay. But we'll see We'll see if that ever changes. So which penalties are you most happy with how they're called and least and all that fun stuff? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. And I wanted to throw in too, that the referees that are in the NHL, they fight their way up through all the leagues, the same as like with players. Uh, they go through a lot of training. And what we see in the NHL really is the, the best of the officials. And I know people are going to say, oh, that's terrible. And they need a higher standard. Um, I have heard ref, you suck chants at AHL games. I have seen people on referees at junior games. Uh, I used to go to Chilliwack games. And there were plenty of times people would yell at the refs. Every single league... And I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say every single hockey league, almost every sport, there's going to be complaints about officiating. Uh, officiating is always going to be a, a big point of contention. And I, I don't think there's a solution people would necessarily all agree on because we don't all agree on what penalties should be or shouldn't be. Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.